Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Alicia and I make sewing tutorials and DIY fashion videos. And in today's thrift flip, I'm going to be transforming two pieces that I found at the thrift store. So I already showed these in my previous clothing haul video. So my inspiration for this thrift flip was from this Korean brand called Chu. So for the yellow men's dress shirt, I'm going to be transforming it into this yellow ruffly top. And for the jeans, I'm going to be transforming it into these wide leg jeans with a frayed hem. So let's get started with the tutorial. First, I'm actually going to be bleaching the jeans to make them lighter. So I filled a bucket with warm water and added in 1.5 cups of bleach. I did end up adding more cups of bleach afterwards. In total, I think I added around 4 cups of bleach. Stir it and then put your jeans inside the bucket. Make sure it's completely submerged in water and stir it occasionally. Check on it every 30 minutes until it reaches your desired color. Keep in mind that the color will always show up a few shades darker when wet. And here's how my turned out after bleaching. I find it looks pretty good. And now to adjust the waist. Seam rip the waistband starting at the side and stop one inch before the zipper. To make the waist smaller, we'll add a front pleat and remove fabric from the sides. Starting with the pleat, mark the edge of the pocket and add another mark at 1.5 inches. And repeat for the other side. To make the pleat, align the two markings together and pin it down. And sew the pleat down with a top stitch. And it should look something like this. Try the jeans with them inside out and pin the sides to fit you comfortably. Use the pins as a reference to sew the sides. Mine were sewn in at about 1.5 inches at the waist and I gradually sewed it closer to the original seam all the way down to have a more straight leg fit. And then sew the edge with a zigzag stitch to prevent any fraying and cut off the extra fabric. And now to adjust the waistband. Mark the new ends of the waistband. Just use the pan side seam as reference for this. Extend the markings all the way to the back and also cut it at an extra half an inch for seam allowance. Place both ends of the waistband right sides together and sew. Pull the raw edges on the inside and pin the waistband and sew it down. A little trick to avoid sewing over the belt loops, sew under it as far as you can go and then move the presser foot in front of the belt loop, backstitch over the previous stitches and continue sewing. Now to make the frayed hem. The jeans were already kind of crop length on me, so I just seam ripped the hem to add some length. I should have undone the hem before bleaching, cause now I got stripes that are different shades of blue. But that's okay I guess, I'll just make it more unique. Cut the jeans at your desired length. I cut off the weird bottom stripe. Sew a straight stitch half an inch above the edge of the jeans. This will make sure the fraying doesn't go any higher and then just use a pin or some tweezers to remove the threads. You can add as much fraying as you want. I decided I wanted a lot of fraying, so I did this until I reached a straight stitch. Cut off all of the extra little threads, and here's how mine turned out. to the yellow top so you'll actually need two men's dress shirts instead of just one so I actually got two at the thrift store just to make sure I had enough fabric or if you have some extra fabric to use for the ruffles that can work as well so for me I have one long sleeve that is yellow with some tiny stripes and I also have a second one which is short sleeve in this pastel yellow color so for the construction of this blouse I'm going to be using the short sleeve top as the base so I made a little diagram, I'll put it right over here. So the solid color top is going to be used for the bodice, for the first layer of the peplum, and also for the little ties at the side. And the long sleeve stripe top is going to be used to make the second peplum ruffle, to make the side ruffles over here, and also to make the sleeves. So feel free to mix and match different fabrics with different parts of the top. 
So to make the wrap bodice, I'm actually just going to follow the same steps I did in my puff sleeve wrap top tutorial. So I'm going to quickly show you guys how to do it in this video. But if you want a more in-depth explanation, make sure to check out that video. I'll put it right over here. Let's start by making the bodice. First, we'll need to deconstruct both of the shirts by cutting off the neckline, seam ripping the pocket, and by removing the sleeves. So I used this bodice pattern and placed it at a diagonal onto the shirt, aligning the shoulder with the button placket and the end with the side seam. Trace it out and remove 2 inches from the bottom. Cut it out with some fabric scissors and flip it onto the other side to make a mirrored piece. Fold the back in half and place the same bodice piece onto it. And same thing, trace and cut it out. Unfold it and you have a complete back piece. You're also going to need to cut a facing for the back piece. So sew it onto the neckline and flip it to the other side to hide the raw edges. Next, place the two front pieces right sides together to the back piece. Sew the shoulder seam and side seams. I used pinking shears, which are scissors like this, and it has a zigzag edge that will prevent the raw edges from unraveling. Next, remove all of the buttons. Pin the bottom where the two front pieces overlap and sew it together. Just like this. There's none in the original design, but I decided to add some darts. To do that, I tried on the top inside out and pinched the extra fabric, pinned it down, and sew it. Time to make the ruffles. For the first layer of the peplum ruffle, I'm using the remaining bottom part of the shirt. Mine was around 8 inches. And using the other shirt for the shorter peplum ruffle, I cut a 4 inch wide rectangle from the bottom of the shirt. And then I cut two 3 inch wide rectangles for the side ruffles. For the peplum layers, you can also undo the button placket for some extra fabric to make the top even more ruffly. You'll also need to cut 1 inch strips of fabric. I used the yoke of the solid color top, and you'll need 4 of these to make the ties. Sew the sides of the peplum layers to create a tube of fabric like this. Next, hem the bottom of the peplum layers. The longer layer was already hemmed since I cut it from the bottom of the top, so I'll just show you how to hem on the shorter layer. So you fold the edges in twice, and I'll make a skinny double hem. Pin it all around and sew it. Now for the side ruffles. Before hemming, you'll want to change the ends of the rectangles into this curved shape. Cut it out and use the cutout shape as a template for all of the ends. And hem the bottom of each ruffle piece the same way as we did for the peplum. Just be careful when hemming the curved part, take your time and use a lot of pins. And now all of the ruffles are hemmed. To create the ruffles, sew a basting stitch at the raw edge. And do the same thing for the peplum pieces as well. So a basting stitch is just a straight stitch using the longest stitch length. It's used to temporarily stitch pieces together or to create ruffles. I show how to ruffle in almost all of my videos, so if you're a returning subscriber, I'm sure you know how to do this. So to make the ruffles, you pull on one of the basting stitches and you gather the fabric. Evenly spread the ruffles and do the same thing for all of the ruffle pieces. Here's a closer shot. Pull on the thread while you gather the fabric and then spread it across the rest of the fabric. And here's all of the completed ruffles. We'll start by attaching the peplum. First, place the shorter peplum layer right sides together to the top. Next, overlay the longer peplum layer right sides together and pin it so that both layers are on top of each other. Make sure there's a lot of pins to keep it in place and sew it down. Finish the raw edges with a zigzag stitch.
flip the peplum and here's how it looks like. Now's a good time to try it on and see if you need any adjustments. For me, I decided to shorten it a tiny bit so I cut off half an inch and hemmed it with a skinny double hem. For the placing of the side ruffles, put the top on, place the ruffles where you want them to be and trace it. And don't forget to do the same for the back. Now you can adjust the markings and even them out with a ruler. To add seam allowance, draw a line a quarter of an inch towards the outside of the first marking. Place the side ruffles right sides together with the raw edge aligned to the seam allowance marking. I'll start by pinning just one ruffle just because I don't have enough pins. And make sure to add a lot of pins so that the ruffles don't move when sewing. Next, I'll make the little ties. Fold them in half and pin it down. Sew one end closed and sew all the way down and keep the other end opened. Clip off the corners and with a stick, push the closed end inside and pull on the fabric until you flip it inside out. You can also use the stick to unfold the corners. And to finish the ties, sew a top stitch to make it nice and clean. Give them a quick iron and they should look like this. Now to add them to the top, place it on the end of the ruffle and pin it. And of course, repeat for the back. Sew on the side ruffle. And when that's done, repeat for the other side. And then flip the ruffles to the right side and top stitch the edge. This will help make sure that the ruffles don't flip to the other side. And now I can move on to the last part, making the sleeves. I'll be using the long sleeves for this. First, make sure the sleeves are bigger than the armholes. If not, add some extra fabric to the sleeves. Shorten the sleeves at 11 inches and cut it straight across. For the sleeve cuffs, cut two rectangle pieces that are 11 inches by one inch and a quarter. Fold them in half and sew the ends to make two loops. We're going to add some ruffles to the sleeve cap and to the ends of the sleeve. Follow the same steps as before, sew a basting stitch, and then pull on the thread to gather the fabric. Turn the top inside out and insert the sleeve into the armhole. Pin it all around and sew. And next is to add the cuff. Place the right side of the cuff to the wrong side of the sleeve and sew it. Fold the cuff upwards and then fold the edges in twice to hide the raw hem. Pin it until everything is secure and sew. Repeat on the other side and here's the finished sleeve. One more thing to add are these little snap closures. Try on the top and mark where you want the top to overlap. And then mark where you want to place the snaps. And then just sew the snaps onto the inside of the top. I just hand sewed it on with some needle and thread. And that's it, here's the final transformation.
really happy with the two items that I made. I usually don't wear jeans at all just because I don't like how they fit on me but I really like how these like loose fitting jeans fit and are actually really nice to pair with different kinds of tops. And I also mentioned in my clothing haul video that this like pastel yellow complements my hair really well so I'm happy I have an extra yellow top in my closet. So if you decide to follow one of my tutorials, make sure to tag me at Ali Yansen on Instagram like that I can see your transformations. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more DIY videos and sewing tutorials. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!